Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And uh, we have the planet Mars, the planet of fire, anger, aggression, passion. <laughs> In the sign of Pisces now. So he's going to be there. I see the dates 27th of June. So till 27th June, Mars is going to be conjunct Jupiter because Jupiter is also in the sign of Pisces now. Okay, So therefore, this is a very interesting uh, conjunction because Mars doesn't like water signs. In fact, he gets debilitated in a water sign, although he rules one of the water signs, which is Scorpio, right? So he gets debilitated in the sign of uh, Cancer, which is the sign ruled by the moon. Uh, and now he's in a situation where he's in the sign of Pisces. So what happens when a planet goes into the sign of Pisces? Well, you have to understand Pisces is a very philosophical sign. People say Pisces is a spiritual sign. Well, that could be at a higher level. But in general, Pisces is a very uh, philosophical sign, which tries to see things which may not be visible sometimes or which may not be visible to the naked eye. So therefore, many times uh, people say that uh, Pisces ascendance or Pisces sun sign, Pisces moon sign people or anybody who has prominent planets in Pisces, they may be very illogical sometimes. So it doesn't mean that they're in illogical, but it, it, it's like saying they are trying to see something which not everybody can see. And Modern signs, whenever they see that somebody is trying to uh, see something which they can't see, they brand them as illogical, right? So that's not correct. Because the sign of Pisces deals with endings, basically. What kind of endings? Endings related to desires, okay? So therefore, the sign of Pisces is a very interesting sign because it tells you that everything finally ends, at the end, it ends, right? And then new beginnings start. So therefore, if a planet is transiting Pisces, like in this case, Mars, till June 27th, it is imperative that you understand that the houses which are ruled by Mars, Mars rules two houses, right? Aries and Scorpio. So the houses, as per your ascendant, which is ruled by Mars, these houses are going to undergo a major transformation. Transformation in the sense, certain patterns and certain things related to that, these houses could end and certain new things could begin. Because what happens is, Pisces is the last of the water signs. And then we have Aries. And within Pisces and Aries, the last degree of Pisces and the first degree of Aries, that uh, is a special position known as Gandanta zone, right? So around 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th, 29th, you can experience this uh, energy of the Gandanta zone, right? And if you watch the uh, nakshatras, which are within the sign of Pisces, so my, uh, Pisces starts with the Purva Bhadrapada nakshatra, then it goes to Uttara Bhadrapada nakshatra, and then finally it culminates into Revati nakshatra. So therefore, uh, you have to understand what Purva Bhadrapada is, what Uttara Bhadrapada is, and what is finally Revati. You also have to understand how does a planet transition from Purva Bhadrapada to Uttara Bhadrapada and then finally to Revati Nakshatra. Okay. So anytime you are interested in learning or trying to figure out what's going to happen if this planet goes into the zodiac sign, Please do two things. Number one is study the nakshatras, which are within that zodiac sign. And also try to study the similarities between the nakshatras, right? Because if you go by the knowledge, uh, then you will see that uh, Urva Bhadrapada is a very aggressive nakshatra, right? Uh, it, it's the nakshatra which shows, you know, Aja Ekapada, one who has, you know, one foot only. So that shows, you know, struggle, intimidation, fear, anxiety, horror, and all these things. But on the contrary, if you see the nakshatra Revati, which is uh, the last nakshatra, 
then you will see that revati is a very mild nakshatra mild in the sense you know it, it has a lot of qualities of you know nurturing caring loving kindness uh, animal protection and all this now how how does it happen that one nakshatra which is so aggressive turns into another nakshatra which is so um, so mild how does it happen because between both of them there is one particular nakshatra which is uttar bhadrapada which actually is responsible for the transition of the purva bhadrapada energy into the revati nakshatra energy so if you do not know what uttar bhadrapada is then there is no use of knowing what is purva bhadrapada or what is revati okay so therefore uh, please study about uttar bhadrapada so what is uttar bhadrapada nakshatra of course uh, we can't make a full video on uttar bhadrapada now but the thing is uh, uttar bhadrapada is related to uh, the sea serpent right so the sea serpent what happens is uh, ahir budanya is his name right he's a very wise sea serpent so how does what, what do you mean when you say oh yeah well, i mean the uh, serpent but uh, what do i make of it you know what does it mean you know mars is transiting in an nakshatra which shows you know sea serpents what do i make out of it right so the sea serpent is very wise so what does it mean it means that the houses which mars rules in your uh, horoscope they uh, you will also develop similar uh, knowledge similar wisdom you will also become wise regarding the uh, characteristics of these houses right because the nakshatra previous to uh, uttar bhadrapada which is purva bhadrapada that actually gives you lot of struggle and lot of realization right but then what do you do when you get knowledge and realization do you just sit there and do nothing well actually you go inwards you try to see what different could uh, what was something which i could have done bit differently right because now you have traveled all the way right so therefore uh, it's very important that you understand uh, the nakshatras uh, which are within pisces okay especially for pisces and scorpio and cancer because you know they are uh, water signs and then there's a fire sign and then the gandanta zone is there right so the nakshatras are very important because no nakshatra goes from a water sign to a fiery sign no nakshatra okay so for example uh, purva bhadrapada purva bhadrapada starts in a air sign and then it goes and ends in water sign but you will never find any particular nakshatra like you know revati or any other right where uh, like aslesha for example right or jeshtha for example these are like mercury ruled nakshatras you will never find them that they have started in water sign and they have gone into another fire sign right because things end whenever water is ending water represents emotions water represents life basically right water represents the culmination of desires either you fulfill your desires or you give up your desires water represents one of the two okay among this water definitely represents any one of the two so therefore you got to understand that whenever a planet is moving into a water sign one of the two will happen either you will uh, you will be forced to give up that desire or you, your desire will be fulfilled to a reasonable good extent but it will still it may sometimes end up uh, leaving you very dissatisfied that oh my god my desire was not completely fulfilled so now when the fire sign starts then there is another possibility for you to either get rid of that desire or start fulfilling that desire once again to the extent that it was not fulfilled uh, but the but the question is uh, what should a intelligent person do right so a intelligent person understands that uh, materialistic desires they are like never ending so therefore you have to see what kind of a desire it is so if 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 that desire is something which is you know sanctioned by the scriptures the scriptural authority by your gurus by your uh, by the sadhus right and the bhagavad gita of course so then even if we try to fulfill the desire it may not be wrong 
but suppose we have a desire which is not sanctioned which is not recommended by uh, the the fulfillment of which is not recommended by the uh, scriptures and the gurus then trying to fulfill that desire can be very detrimental for both our material and spiritual lives okay so therefore you got to check what is that desire so whichever house is mars rules you got to go and check right what's going on there and uh, what kind of desires am i trying to cultivate right what do, what do i do should i be satisfied with what i have got or should i go and uh, take the leap the next uh, go to the next version one easy way to understand that is uh, you should uh, you should keep into consideration that the desire which you are trying to fulfill should not uh, damage other areas of your life right like for example sometimes i get people who tell me that oh sir i got this dream job you know but got to work like 12 hours 15 hours every day and then they ask me sir uh, i am i want to leave this job you know but it's paying me so much nice money i can't leave it right so then i ask them that uh, okay imagine that one day you will have all the money of the world uh but you will have no family members no friends no relatives nobody to share your happiness with will you be happy with that money and then they say yeah no no definitely not so therefore uh we should not elevate one area of life at the cost of other areas you know like family rela relationships and health and most importantly our spiritual life right or is the other way around like you know you uh, we should also not put focus on other area you know like health for example you know some people they say oh we spend uh, two hours three hours every day on health you know we do pranayam yoga meditation so many things but these are all mundane things you know we do don't do any spiritual stuff we don't do sadhana we don't do we do not chant mantras or we do not read the bhagavad gita that is also nonsense right so therefore you got to understand that you have to prioritize your uh spiritual life your material life your financial needs and then uh, your uh, relationships and then also your health right so body mind intellect and soul all the four should be balanced if they are not balanced then uh, it can wreak havoc within your life right so therefore try and ask yourself what what do i do i have that what it needs uh, am i ready to pay the price for mars right so if you feel you are then go ahead but make sure it does not eat up other areas of your life otherwise at the end you will be miserable all right that will be all from my side uh, god is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website down in the description section